Hello and welcome back. So far in this week, we've seen how to build more flexible models using the Functional API. We've also seen how we can access the different layers within a network and how we can use tensors and variables to inspect and analyze parts of the network. And that we can then use these tools to take parts or modules of deep learning models and use them as components to build new models. This is a very typical thing to do in transfer learning, where we take part of a pre-trained model and essentially use it as a feature extractor for a new model that we'd like to train on a separate data set. When we do this though, we might want to make sure that the parameters of the model component we're using stay fixed during the training, and that we only train the new layers we've added to the model. In this video, we'll see how we can do that. Let's use this model as an example. It's a simple 2D convolutional neural network, and we've built it using the functional API. Let's say that for whatever reason, we want to make sure that the weights of the convolutional layer are frozen and don't change during the training. We can do this as part of the setup of the model. Each layer that has parameters has a trainable keyword argument that defaults to true, but here I'm setting trainable to be false for the convolutional layer. And this means that the values of the weights won't change from the initialized values. The dense layer, on the other hand, isn't frozen, and its weights can change over the course of training. Another way we can do this is to freeze the layer after the model is built. In this line, you can see that we're accessing the convolutional layer using the getLayer method and passing in the name that we set when we created the layer. The layer has a trainable attribute, and here we're setting it to be false. It's important that you do this before the model is compiled for it to take effect, so that the optimization process knows that this layer is frozen and its weights can't change. This is how we can freeze certain layers of preloaded models. We can access the model layers we want to freeze, either using the getLayer method as we do here, or by indexing into model.layers, and set the trainable attribute to be false. The layer will then be frozen during training. We can also freeze entire models. Let's say that we've trained our first model and saved the entire model to disk. Later on, we load the model as we've done in this line. After we've loaded the model, we can then freeze all of its weights by setting the model attribute trainable to be false. Let's say that what we'd like to do now is to use the first few layers of this model, just removing the final dense layer and add a new trainable dense layer on top. So here, we're accessing the output tensor that we want. We first retrieve the flatten layer by using the getLayer method and passing in the flatten layer name. And then we get the output tensor for that layer by using the output attribute. That's the output before the final dense layer of our preloaded model. Notice that we could have retrieved the final dense layer itself and used the input tensor for that layer. It wouldn't have made a difference. OK, so now we have the output from the preloaded model that we want, and we create our new dense layer that we want to train. And using the functional API, we call that layer object on the tensor output that we just extracted. That gives us our new output tensor, and that's going to be the output of our new model. So then we build the new model. The input to this model is the input tensor to the preloaded model, and the output is the new output tensor we just created. Now we're ready to compile and fit this new model. When we do, the reused components from the preloaded model are frozen. Their parameters won't change during the training. But the new final dense layer isn't frozen, and so its parameters will be fitted to the new dataset. You've now learned a sophisticated set of tools to build new models using parts of pre-trained models. And this is a very powerful approach for building deep learning networks, especially if you're working on small datasets. In the next coding tutorial video, you'll practice freezing network layers yourself on new and pre-built models. And I'll see you in the next lecture video. Thank <laughs> you.